All right there. Hey, everybody. Let's get this session started off. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tracy Zetinik, the Marketing Manager at Amplify. Today, we'll be discussing Stebo Systems Step Platform for automotive usage. As you know, when registering for this webinar, you had the option to pre-submit questions related to our topic. Answering those questions will happen throughout, um, throughout this session, but we also will be discussing specific talk points that we wanted to cover. Um, as with all sessions conducted by Amplify, a recording will be made available to all registrants via email in the coming days and will always be hosted on our website under resources for your review. Take note at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button where you can submit questions to our panel. However, due to our limited time and the complexity of our discussion, we will most likely have to hold questions until the end or we'll follow up directly via email following. Without further ado, let's get to know our experts. All right, so our, from our team here at Amplify, we have Durga, who is a solution architect with more than 15 years of experience delivering quality information technology systems. Durga's experience is focused on driving business results and improving operational efficiency to customers using web applications, data warehousing, business intelligence, MDM, PIM, and integrating COTS applications with enterprise IT products. Secondly, we have Wallace, who is a senior solution consultant here at Amplify that has worked as a step SME for General Motors. Other roles he held during his 19 years with GM include a database specialist uh, and e-business analyst. During his time at Amplify, he has worked on implementation and strategy projects with STEP. He also has experience in implementing IntraWorks. Craig is a solution consultant with 25 years of previous experience with General Motors. In a variety of roles as a STEP administrator and solution architect, a STEP automotive PADB specialist, a tariff classification research project and database manager, a business side IT liaison and automotive parts specialist. Thanks for joining us to lend your automotive exper expertise. I'll go ahead and hand things over to Wallace to give us some background on our session today. Hello. Um, with STEP, there are three automotive standards that STEP does uh, support, which is the auto care standard, the tech doc standard, and the NAPA standard. Today, we're only going to focus on the auto care standard. Within the auto care standard, um, there are two main file types that will be either imported or exported, which are PIs and ACES files, which are supported by um, five main tables from auto care, which are the PCDB, which is the parts classification database, the PADB, which is the part attribute database, the BCDB, which is the vehicle configuration database, a brand table, which is just one uh, table that has every single supplier within AutoCare's uh, that is joined AutoCare. And that's used to know who files are coming to and from. There's a QDB um, file, which is the qualifier database, which is basically a standardized notes table. And we'll move on into step. So starting off, we're diving into the workbench portion of step. We'll dig into a little bit of the web UI a little bit later. But within the workbench, there's an auto care root file, which underneath there is where all the database information from auto care is stored. Looking at the screenshot here, we'll see that um, the parts categorization database, there are a couple things to note and you'll see on the right hand side of the screen. One is the PADB version. Then we have a version date for PADB and a version date for the PCDB. These version dates are the last file from AutoCare that was loaded. 
Now, if we switch um, over here within step, the ID for um, different levels of the PADB, like the category, the auto care ID is appended to the end of the actual ID name. So uh, I, the ID for accessory and fluid category ends up being AC underscore category underscore one. One in the PADB equals accessories and fluid, where the subcategory would be 290 and step just um, brings that down. So it still has the category and then it appends the subcategory so you know which level you're going to from that end. Then it moves to part type. Part type is really what type of part is being used within the database. It uh, step shows the revision date of that part type. That is not the last time that PCDB was uploaded. That is the last time that part type was updated by AutoCare. And we can see on the right-hand side of the screen, the PADB is basically part of the PCDB. It's really kind of appended to it. These part, so when you look at a part type, you can tell which part type attributes are valid for each part type. There are over 3,000 part type attributes. STEP will only show you the part type attributes that are valid for a specific part type when you go to a product underneath there. Now, when STEP is loaded in to the system that you get some out of the box importers, which are for ACES, the brand table, the PADB, PCB, all those tables, those come out of the box. So you don't have to do anything for them. Um, Craig is gonna dive into that a little bit more. So I'm gonna hand you off to Craig. Thanks Wallace. Hi everyone. So here this slide looks at the uh, AutoCare ACES import workflow. And let me mention that all the AutoCare workflows are identical to this. If we bypass the validation and conversion states uh, and look at the delta calculation state, we're going to single this state out since it's key to eliminating, excuse me, key to eliminating a lot of unnecessary reviews. The delta calculation state compares the converted files to either the step database or the last loaded file of that type, then generates a set of step, step XML files containing only the change data, so a delta. This increases the performance of the actual imports so that unnecessary data isn't processed. The takeaway note here is that the delta, delta calculation state only allows new or changed records to enter step, which alleviates the need to review a full file after each import. Uh, if we follow, uh, follow on a little farther in this one, uh, the delta calculation state can produce three possible results, succeeded, failed, or completed with errors. Uh, the file in the workflow, if the import file fails, excuse me, if the fi import file fails the delta calculation, the file in the workflow is sent to the error state. Transition includes a default business rule that's used to populate the status to the end users so they're aware. Uh, the file will remain in that error state until it's acted on by a user. It's not possible to do any further processing in the file, though it can be reloaded if needed or it can also be discarded. And if you choose that path, the business rule here will automatically remove the file from the workflow so it's no longer displayed in the workflow tasks. If the calculation completes successfully without any errors, the file automatically moves to the ready to import state. No business rules on the transition there. There's nothing to update in the status. Uh, it's possible for the file to complete the calculation while having errors. But in that case, the file is moved to the next state using the completed with errors transition, which like the succeed transition does not contain any default business rules. So as with a successful completion, the file is automatically moved to the ready to import state. The next slide 
is allowed ASUS versions. So if we can move to that. Uh, this slide just brings to attention the accepted ASUS file versions. Versions back to 3.0 are accepted and upward to the most current version, which is 4.1 for here, but any four version, we could touch on that later. Uh, the next slide is product structure and ASUS application placement. By default, ASUS applications are created under the PIES item and given the same name as the PIES item. A business rule is typically added to the import workflow, which will update the name to a year make model combination, improving the user experience when looking at applications. Next slide is a look into the auto care attributes. Here's the default step workbench auto care attribute structure, which is automatically created when the automotive features enabled. It's also possible to create custom structures and tie them in should specific business requirements call for it. Next slide is we're gonna start looking at the web UI. Um, here's a look at the default browser-based user interface or web UI in StepSpeak. Visible here are several widgets designed to process all the various auto care import files, QDB, brand file, PCDB, VCDB, PADB, ASUS and PIES. Those are just to the left of the top right. Following those are the workflow state widgets, which as you can see have rows representing the corresponding states in the workflows. Three views are available for each of these represented by the people icons above the states. Those views are to show item counts assigned to the users. The possible views are item counts of the current user, which is one head, item counts of all items assigned to all users in the current users work group, which is the default two heads as in blue there and all those. And finally, the counts of all items assigned to any user, which is if you select the three head icon. Then clicking on any of the rows below there will navigate to additional web UI screens that support the tasks of that state. Also notable here is the link of the auto care application manager on the quick links widget. Uh, when easy setup actions have been used to create a standard data model, much of the application manager is ready to be used. So for easy access, a link to the application manager is automatically added to that Quick Links widget on that web UI homepage. Uh, application manager provides tools for managing application data, which we'll look at in the next slide. Here's a look at the application manager interface. Uh, it's an interactive tool that combines easy to use intelligent surfaces, excuse me, easy to use intelligent searches uh, with an effective results table at the bottom. The, this allows web UI users to quickly and easily build custom searches involving valid combinations of valid, or excuse me, of different vehicle types, makes, models, years, options, regions, and part types. Once the search criteria is selected, users can view, create, edit, and delete part applications along with many other aspects of the search results. If need be, it's also easy to create an Excel export from the customized search results just by clicking the report button. That'll export it for you. There's a lot to get into there, but that's just a, a high level explanation. Uh, next up is the ACES, ACES application exporter. Stumble over the words. Uh, here's a view of the ACES exporter. ACES export wizard, uh, as mentioned previously, supported ACES versions are 3.0 up to 4.1 and 4.1 is demonstrated here. Uh, value entries to the bolded rows are required. Those being company, sender name, sender phone and document title. The remainder are optional. Also notable is that the part number source is selectable as on the second screenshot there. Uh, allowing the ID name or any given attribute name to be selected as the part number that's exported or used as a source. So that provides some flexibility, especially being able to use the attribute value. Uh, 
Next is the pies exporter. And I actually think this is the final slide, so we're kind of flying through this. Hopefully there's questions. The final slide is the pies exporter. Uh, current bill is able to provide exports in multiple pies versions up to 7.2. It doesn't really ap appear well on the slide, but the required field here is, are also bolded, which are uh, blanket effective date, technical contact, contact email, and then along with the brand owner and brand owner DUNS and GNL, GLN values, excuse me. Uh, advanced options are available to provide for, as with the ACES exporter, allowing to use an ID name or give an attribute name as a part number source. And a more recent change to note uh, is about including price sheets. And the current release pricing is stored in data containers as at the top of the slide. This change allows for the storage and export of multiple price, sheet, price sheets, such as list, jobber, and WD that some will be familiar with. And one last note on the PIES export with regard to the description checkbox. If this option is selected, all standard PIES description attributes that are valid for the PIES object and have a value will be exported in the description segment of the schema. Wallace or Durga, anything to add? Yes, just going back to the um, ACES import section, there was a change in the schema between um, versions 3 and 3.2. So it, any ACES file that's loaded that's of any type of version 3 will be ran against the 3.2 schema. The big change was in the header for where the countries are listed. So that's just something to be aware of if you're loading um, version 3 files, ACES files. So you still need to go back and change that header or you change, still, you, eliminated that need? You still need to go back and change the header in versions 3 or 3.1. Yep, okay. To match 3.2 or else they will fail on import. Uh, and I wanted to add one more uh, detail. So far, what we have covered is out of the box uh, that Stevo is providing. Um, but in case, um, these are all out of the box workflows, right? But if you have um, extension API license, you can add your own uh, business rules to the using the extension API and you can plug in those business rules to these workflows. Suppose for example, the, um, in the um, automotive application data upload, uh, if you want to add your uh, own information that is related to your, your company, then what you could do is, uh, uh, in between steps in the workflow steps, you can um, you know add a own business rule using extension API and you can plug in that code so that it can add your own information to that XML file and import it into uh, the step uh, step system. So there is a possibility to customize those workflows as long as you have proper licensing to um, add your own code. And along with those import workflows, we have seen uh, the need for additional workflows and pushing the new items coming in into additional workflows for the sake of reporting. Do you see a, a lot of need for um, customizing the workflows? There's for the out of the box workflows, there's usually not a lot of need to customize them. The big customizations really are around how people want to see the ACES application name displayed within step. We've seen really simple business rules being added for to be year make model, some type of combination of that being added. For, so then that's the name that displays. So you just don't see the pies item. And then all the ACES applications with the same name as the PIES item. So you don't really know which application it is within underneath there when looking in the workbench. So that's a common customization right there. Other than that, it's just if, if there's a need for specialized reporting on some aspect of like 
ACES data, we can see a um, state at the end of ex on exit of one of the states pushing the information into another workflow also. So it can be looked at there. Yeah, and in some scenarios, uh, you know, some clients already have a uh, auto care application built in, a, um, in, in some structured way, right? And if they already have SQL reports built using that uh, information, if that particular information is not part of the standard um, auto care import, then you can add those uh, attributes along the way uh, and then still utilize it in your uh, SQL reporting. Yeah, and another thing is when the ACES imports are done, they go into the default auto care hierarchy that's set up in step. There's also an option to have a custom hierarchy to the way a business sorts their parts and link back to that hierarchy to have the application data under a separate blue structure. Do you have to purchase something inside a step in order for you to be able to do these ACEs and PIEs um, imports or, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, it, um, all the automotive extensions are a separate license. license. And for auto care, you have to, for those tables, you have to join the auto care association to where you'll be able to, log in and download those tables all the table all the like the pcdb um kdb pcdb qdb brand table those are all updated on a monthly basis except the pcdb is up, up, updated twice a month so you can download it and the brand table is updated as changes are made to it so you could download it at any time what we've seen and standardized is they're usually downloaded once a month and loaded into step once a month. All right, guys, I think that's some great information. I don't have any other, other questions from the audience at this time. So um, this concludes today's webinar, but as a thank you for attending this Ask the Expert session, we are offering a complimentary one-to-one -one follow up session with an expert to answer any specific questions you have aside from those we have already covered. This expert session allows you to have that special attention of an industry professional to help you through your most difficult pain points. If you're, if you're interested in taking advantage of this, um, go ahead and give us an email directly to experts at goamplify.com, or you can respond to the follow-up email that will contain the recording of today's session. We hope that this webinar gave you the opportunity to see what our company has to offer, especially with our expertise in automotive, as we've put on display today. Um, let's continue the conversation on how Amplify can help your business with, our, with your MDM strategy and um, You'll receive your recording by email in the following days and be sure to keep an eye out for more Ask the Expert sessions. We'll be looking forward to being your trusted resource in the MDM space. Have a great day and thank you so much guys for speaking today. Problem. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.